I'll be honest. I'm actually on vacation right now if you are watching this video within the first few days that it came out. However, before I took to the skies, I decided I did want to try to get this video prepared so that it could drop while I'm out because it's just too exciting to wait a week or so for you all to see it. And as you can guess, yes, it is about Zen 7 and much more details about Zen 7 than you might expect I might have at this point far before it launches. Now, before I get to that, though, I must say, if you missed it, this channel, if I may say so, has really been on the forefront of a lot of AMD CPU leaks since, I don't know, I'd say, especially since late 2021, with big recent standouts being a flurry of Zen 6 leaks that detailed all sorts of things that you really should check out. You don't want to miss them. They detailed the multiple core types that you might get even on desktop. The massive core count increases going up to 24 or even 26 cores for consumer products, depending on which cores you're talking about. And a new layout of chiplets that includes bridge dies so that there's even lower latency between IO dies and chiplets. And even the utilization with Zen 6 of TSMC's N2X Extreme High Clocking Node for crazy high clock speeds. And you know what? I will say other leakers have backed up this information, recommending that if people want to know stuff about Zen 6, they should just check out Moore's Law as dead information. And even AMD has confirmed the incredible use of two nanometer by Zen 6 uh, next year as well already. It is official. And so, yeah. I'm saying all of this, though, at the beginning of the video, not to gloat, but because the documents that I have received regarding Zen 7 are incredibly sensitive. Like, I really can't show the overwhelming majority of them. I'm going to show you some, including one that gives you a sneak peek at the architecture, but I can't show you all of them. And so I bring up recent leaks, ones that were confirmed by other leakers and AMD themselves, so that you know, just because I'm not showing something I'm telling you about, it is linked to a real document. And I will show you what I can to try to give as much proof as possible without jeopardizing my sources. Uh, but anyways, let's get to this first slide here that led to the majority of the information you're about to learn about today. So this is actually something I've been sitting on for months now about core variants in development for, you can see it right there in the upper middle of the screen, Zen 7. And I'm not going to read every single line on this document. I don't think I need to. A lot of it people already know about. I'm just going to get to what the important things are here. And that's really that you can see Zen 7 on there and you can see there is no mention of e -cores. That means that AMD, at least from what I am seeing here, is still planning to stick with a single main architecture every generation and then split that off into different variants. Well, what types of variants? Well, let's look at this again. You can see that there is the classic one that goes for high frequencies, IPC, and efficiency. But then there's also the dense cores. Now, that's often what they would probably kind of call cloud cores now publicly. But if you notice, they still have frequency on there in addition to the same efficiency and IPC. That means that they're... Compared to before, probably not clocking as fast as the classic cores, but aiming to get higher than we saw before, like higher than just 2.5 or 3 gigahertz, most likely, with a lot of the dense core variants. And then if you want, you know, more low power, which the cloud cores with Zen 4 and Zen 5 so far, far have aimed to do, basically be really efficient and really dense. Well, actually, there's just going to be another one, low power cores that I've already talked about extensively in a recent video, if you missed it. And those are the ones where they want them to be really small, like dense cores, but then also drive for higher power at the expense of some I. PC and frequency. And then there is also the efficiency cores, which, again, it's a little different, right? They want the same IPC as dense and classic cores, and they want to be more very efficient, but they are willing to take up a bit more area than probably the low power cores would. And then there is, well, off in the lower right-hand corner there, 3D cores. And like I said, I've been sitting on this slide for months now, and I didn't really think too much about it. I assume that meant Vcash, right? Just X3D cores? Well, actually, the answer is no. The answer here is that there is a new type of purely 3D core that uses a radical new 3D stacking design for tons of cash and a ton of performance with core count increases. And I actually have a picture I can show you proving this new 3D stacking design. And I know the projected IPC core counts on server and a bunch of other architectural features for Zen 7. But before I get to that, first in ad from 
FlexiSpot. This piece of content is brought to you by FlexiSpot and their roster of high-quality bed frames and washable rugs. Recently, co-host of Broken Silicon, Dan, received FlexiSpot's new Japanese joinery bed frame. And it's, well, it's incredibly easy to assemble, requiring almost no effort or time to do so. I actually asked him a week ago, hey, uh, when were you going to do that unboxing and assembly of that, by the way? And he said, Oh, it's done. It took me like five minutes. He forgot to mention it to me just because of how easy it was. He forgot had already got it done. But it isn't just easy, I will say. It's also sturdy as well, being made of solid wood. It's also very cost effective with how it's priced for the quality you're getting. It also has many customizable options as well. And those customizable options can be paired with a matching end table. Additionally, they make washable rugs at FlexiSpot as well that are very easy to set up and are, as the title would suggest, machine washable. My girlfriend and actually our pets love it in her office space. And without going into too much detail here, her cat Maurice already gave us a chance to test how easy it is to wash. And it is very easy. Sorry if that's TMI. But anyways, as longtime viewers know, we have tons of FlexiSpot products in our family. And that's because they are consistently high quality products. If you'd like one of these, please follow the links below and save big during their Memorial Day sales event. If you do, you'll both be supporting the channel and also getting yourself the best possible deal on these products. So support Moore's Law is Dead with FlexiSpot today. All right, now let's not waste any more time here. Before I put the sunscreen though, let me just remind you one more time. Everything you're about to see was detailed in at least one or multiple documents, and then I cross-referenced that with AMD sources. I just can't show you the overwhelming majority of it because it is way, way, way too sensitive, but the details, well, they're too exciting for them to not be shared in my opinion. So let me, again, put this on screen here. AMD Zen 7 3D Core Leak, early May 2025. Now, look, it's very early here. And so therefore, some of these details are subject to change. For example, uh, I do know that they're targeting an above 20% uh, spec int 17 performance increase at same clocks between Zen 7 and Zen 6. And a lot of people would take that to flatly mean an at least 20% IPC increase. I peg that after talking to my sources at a 15 to 25% IPC uplift, most likely. But I have to warn you, right? I think Zen 5 got like a 17 to 20% increase in that sort of an application. And I remember being told back in like 2023 or something, 24, early 24, maybe. I don't know, somewhere around there. 24, 23, uh, that AMD was trying to get above 20% IPC with Zen 5. And then eventually, of course, I leaked that it would be lower than that. And it turned out that in games, the per clock gaming increase was even lower. So I can't promise you they're going to achieve their goals, but they are trying to get at least around a 20% IPC increase. And I peg that as 15 to 25%. Again, things are early. All right, but moving on past IPC, Zen 7, and I have, again, I have this documented, plans to utilize TSMC's 1.4 nanometer for its core chiplets and then four nanometer for its V cache chiplets. And for anyone who says that's crazy, remember, I leaked that Zen 6 would use two nanometer. People called me crazy. And what happened? AMD confirmed that. So this isn't crazy. AMG just never wants to lose to Intel again. And they are planning to use bleeding edge nodes to do that every time. And then also two megabytes of L2 cache per core on die. And then seven megabytes per core for the L3 chiplets, which right now I believe it's like eight megabytes or something per core or whatever it is uh, for the Vcache slices. This time they're moving to seven megabytes, but it's 3D stacked, so much lower latency. They expect higher performance despite the lower cache per core. Additionally, I have documentation and you're gonna see a little slice of it. Actually, let's put that on screen now. Here is, and I, I only got the okay to show this part of the document that I put in black and white to protect sources. But there you go. Here is what one part of a diagram of Zen 7 looks like. You can see labeled there seven megabyte L3 slice for cores. And then there you have PT cores labeled. And again, this is one part of the diagram, but you're probably saying, wait, just on screen here, I can count like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like 10 cores. And that's clearly like less than half of it. How many cores are they planning to do per Epic chiplet? Well, if I put the leak back on screen, and I know this is an odd number, 33 cores. They're planning to do 33 cores per Zen 7 chiplets. And also these are backwards compatible with the Zen 6 Epic IO die from what I can tell. And then finally, that brings you, by the way, to 264 cores on server. Now, that is a lot of cores, 264. But I must point out, 
that AMD went from Zen 3 to Zen 4 96 cores. That's a 50% increase. And then they went to 192 cores with Zen 5. C again, that is that's a doubling of cores. And then for Zen 6, as I've already leaked with Venice, they plan to go to 256 Zen 6 C cores. So if you think about that, that's a 50% increase, a doubling, and then something that's around like what a 25% increase or so. So 256 to 264. I mean, what is that? That's like a 5%-ish increase in core counts. That's not a very big in increase. That's more than we saw from Zen 2 to Zen 3, which was a no increase. But that tells you that this, this generation, Zen 7, probably pretty analogous to Zen 3, where with Zen 2, more cores, yes, still more IPC, and a new layout that brought you lower latency. That's what Zen 6 will do. Zen 6 will bring more cores over Zen 5 with a new layout for lower latency. And then Zen 7, a little more cores on a uh, server, maybe a little more in some different departments for like desktop and uh, and mobile. But for the most part, it's about the increase in performance per core. And so that's what you're going to get with Zen 7, which, going back to the leak slime, the current tape out target is October 2026, which I'm told should point to a late 2027 or early 2028 launch, meaning that, yes, Zen 6 should come out a little over a year from right now, and then a little over a year from that, they want to launch Zen 7. And look, I know, all the time we see stuff like this, and then it gets delayed or whatever. So I cannot promise you it won't. But what I can tell you is that at least right now, AMD is seemingly planning to have Zen 7 out to do battle with Nova Lake and do so with new 3D cores, which is huge because it's interesting. You know, Intel is planning to go to, as this channel exclusively leaked, I believe it was ELLC uh, cache, basically Intel's equivalent to vCache with Nova Lake. AMD is going past that. By the time Intel gets vCache, AMD is going to be like, vCache? <laughs> That's so last gen. We're going to full 3D cores here, stacked. And I don't know. I know Intel will do some 3D stacking as well, but I think this tells you that even if Nova Lake has a home run cash situation here, AMD is going to the next level as well. And so they will be very competitive, I believe, with Nova Lake. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's going to pretty much come to the close then here. My major takeaway from all of this is, like I said, Zen 6 is probably analogous to Zen 2. It'll be another Zen 2 moment. And I think Zen 7 is going to be another Zen 3 moment where, yeah, look, Zen 2 was a huge gaming uplift over Zen 1. Zen 6 will be a massive gaming uplift over Zen 5, but Zen 7 is where they're doubling down on low latency, high APC, IPC, and a major cache enhancement, just like Zen 3 did. And, you know, <laughs> 2 nanometer for Zen 6, 1.4 nanometer for Zen 7, trying to get things out every year and a half. This is AMD taking Intel seriously and thinking, the party's over, we did beat Intel, but we think they might swing back and we're not going to be pulling any punches when they do. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like button. Please remember to share this video, to comment below, and to subscribe to the Moore's Law Z YouTube channel and ring that bell button. And then, of course, also make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. If you do, you'll get access to Die Shrinks. Another one comes out this week, even though I'm on vacation, that actually involves discussions with developers about what's holding back modern graphics. Very excited for that one. And you also get access to the Discord to discuss this uh, content with the community and me, and you'll get access to other uh, perks as well. So please support us on Patreon if you have that extra money. And even if you don't, tell you what though, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching.